Hey everybody, it's Miranda here with a tutorial for Create with Prima. And this month I wanted to bring you all some ideas for how to package gifts. Um, I got this We Are Memory Keepers punch board for making gift bags, which we all know is a savior during Christmas season or any gift giving occasion because we all have those packages that just will not wrap and you can't make it look pretty. But with this, you can really go to town and make these beautiful gift packaging. So hopefully I can give you guys some insp inspiration for it. So to hop right in, I'm showing you right here how it came in the package. It's really small. Um, I'm using the Zila Teal Paper Collection because it was that perfect wintry blue color I wanted to go for. But then I'm also breaking out the Sweet Peppermint Collection from last year because it has a lot of the classic, you know, reds and greens and the typical Christmas colors. Um, I wanted to say really quickly, you do not have to use these in the size that I'm showing. I do show the shaker one is a bit larger and they give you measurements for these on how to do it, but all you have to do is double or triple whatever it's telling you to do. You can make these things ginormous. Um, you can make them very big. I've been experimenting. So I wanted to go ahead and say that this is a good investment for gift bags because they don't have to be just 12 inches or 10 inches. They can be quite large. Okay, so what you'll do is you'll cut your paper to size and then when you, if you have the punch board, it will have all of the instructions with it. If you don't, there are a million templates online. All you have to do is Google gift bag template and you can print them out in any size and you can use that. So I have some IOD alphabet stamps here, which I love so much. And I just wanted to go ahead and spell out a couple of things like joy, joy and 25 for the, you know, December 25th and Noel and on some of them, I think I put ho, 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 and just Santa Claus and just different little sentiments. So I wanted to go ahead and use those because I feel like they don't get used quite enough and they are so beautiful, especially that particular set. Everything will be linked below, of course. Um, so I will have that particular set and that font of the IOD alphabet stamps and they're beautiful and they're the perfect size. So I'm going along here. I'm not gonna go into too much detail with this um, punch board because it's not a Prima item and I'm sure there are plenty of tutorials online already on how to use it. And like I said, if you don't have it, feel free to, um, you know, Google a template. You can even buy gift bags at the store, like say the dollar store or any thrifty store and use your Prima papers and your embellishments to really, really bring them out and make them super pretty with some of the ideas that I'm going to show you in here. So I will show you how to do one bag on using the punch board and then the rest you'll kind of just see me decorating it with the beautiful Prima embellishments. So I'm using the Sweet Peppermint collection here and I'm not big on typical like red, green, traditional Christmas colors, but I wanted to show a little bit of everything because once I got started on these bags, I kind of could not quit. It was just kind of like an obsession. So as you're folding, it gives you all these score lines um, and then it has that little triangular part so that your bag will fold just right. Um, you know, you can go grab a gift bag and just dissect it, you know, very easily pull it apart and you can use that as a template too. Um, I've done that in the past and it worked out very, very well for me. So you just, I'm going to use my planner glue pen, which is my savior, my hero, my number one go-to item for paper crafts that don't need a heavy adhesive. Um, and I use that planner glue pen throughout this whole tutorial. You're going to see me use one of the planner glue pens and I really love it. It's very strong and it holds this together perfectly. So everything's nice and creased and now I just need to go ahead and adhere the bottom part. And again, I'm using the planner glue pen. If I decided to put something a little bit heavier in here, I might go with, um, a heavier glue um, but these are going with an ornament swap I'm participating in so they are not going to be very heavy so that's what it will look like when you are all done and I know the Y kind of curves around to the side and that's fine with me so on the punch board itself it comes with um, a on the back side it comes with a hole punch but I just use my crocodile it was easier for me just to break out my crocodile and punch through at the top and I didn't measure as you can see um, I just kind of eyeballed it. 
So I'm breaking out some of those wooden icons from the Sweet Peppermint collection and um, different flowers. All You're going to see me break out so many different embellishments. Um, a lot of it will be from the Zila Teal and the Sweet Peppermint collection though. And just a for note, if you see me using any adhesive, it's going to be the 3D Matte Gel. That is my go-to adhesive for adhering anything you know, that is going to have any weight to it whatsoever. Um, I absolutely love it. So you'll see me play around a lot. I'll sit down sometimes when I'm watching TV or just laying around and I will do a lot of stamping or fussy cutting. So I stamped a bunch of butterflies, Prima butterflies, some different stamps I had and I um, just fussy cut them all out. So it was time to use some of those up. And now I'm just going to lace through the top there with some, it's some, um, Oh, I can't think of the name of it right now, but I will have it in the description bar right now. It's called like, it's not like seam binding, but it's called something like that. And I'm very sorry that I can't think of the name right now, but, um, I'm going to tie this in a bow and you know, you can make it tight or loose depending on how big the item going in it is, or if you have tissue paper coming out the top. I always do a fishtail cut on the edges of my ribbon, or in this case lace, because um, I just feel like it really polishes it and makes it look a lot better. So I'm just tying my little bow. I have these little pieces um, that I get from my yard from just different trees, and um, we get pine a ton of pine cones. They're usually much too large to use, but in this case I found one that was a good size. The burlap I'm using are from the tickets and tags that came with the Sweet Peppermint collection and I did use a few on some that aren't aren't shown on camera. I made 12 of these all together, but I didn't show all of them because not all of them were so ornate. And it would have taken about 10 hours to show. It's just been like a work in progress and I had to kind of pick and choose which ones I was going to um, show in the tutorial because they're, it's really fun to do. So I'm just adhering everything with the 3D matte gel. And the great thing about this gel is that like it will hold your item immediately. Um, immediately it's going to kind of hold it in place. But you still get a little bit of wiggle room. You know within like 10 minutes if you decide you want to move it you can do so. So right there I have some gesso and I'm using a paintbrush. And I, I mean not a paintbrush, a toothbrush. And I am just kind of rubbing my finger along the bristles and then I went around the pine coat as well. I have found that using that works so much better than the paintbrush because I don't get it all over myself. I don't have it on my face. By the time I'm done, it just works out a lot better. So that's what I have been using lately. And here I am stamping again all over the paper. I have different sized blocks so that I can spell out what I want. Now you do only get one of each letter. So like you'll see in a second when I do the ho ho ho, I had to kind of stamp it over and over. So I had to kind of, um, you know, make sure I was lining things up correctly if I used, you know, two of the same letter. But this font is just so beautiful. So I have it going down vertically. And sorry for bumping the camera there. I do have it above me. So sometimes um, when I'm stamping, I'll kind of bump it with my shoulder. But I love this font. It is so beautiful. The IOD stamps are beautiful, y'all. They're so big and they're perfect for any occasion. But these were just the perfect size for really accenting these bags that I was making. I really loved the way that the ho 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 kind of wraps all the way around the bag that it ended up on. So as you can see there, you know, you only have one of each. So I just chose a small acrylic block and I'm using, um, I could have used chalk edger, but I wanted something that was very permanent. So I'm using memento ink and tuxedo black just because I wanted something a little bit, um, a little bit darker and just a little bit more permanent with the mediums I was going to go on there with. And the drying time is pretty, pretty much instant. So that's what that looks like with it going all the way around. And I absolutely love it. So there I have the ones that I'm going to, I chose to show on camera. Um, and I have some of the trims and stuff like that one right there is from the um, holiday collection from last year. Like I said, I'll have all the links down below. Um, and I just love, love, love all of the little jutes and trims and everything that Prima makes. It's so perfect. So here I have a little wooden deer that I got at Michael's. It's just a plain, it's not chipboard, it's like a wooden piece. And I am using just tacky glue. I decided to use just tacky glue instead of gel because I was running out of my 3D gel and I didn't want to run out before um, my projects were done. I really needed it to be strong for the other, you know, 
pieces I was going to assemble. So I had to break out the tacky glue here. So I'm just making sure I have a nice even coat all the way across my deer with my finger there. And you'll see I, I tend to use my fingers for everything. They get very dirty, but that's okay. I'm using the Gold Rush glass glitter here, and I'm just pouring the whole thing right on top of there. And um, I have a paper there that it will just easily go right back into the bottle. So that is what the deer is going to look like there. So now I'm going to show you that you can use border punches to make a very pretty top to one. This is going to be my favorite bag and it's the most elaborate one by far. And I'm sorry you're seeing so much of my arm there, but to get a good press on that border punch, I kind of had to really get in there for that. So I apologize for that. This is a stamp that comes with the Sweet Peppermint collection and I really love it. It's just kind of like a newsprint, um, a Christmas ad advertisement type deal. And I'm just kind of randomly pouncing it on there. I'm not trying to get the full block. Um, just, you know, pushing down in certain areas. I like the way the wreath looked, so I tend to go for that quite a bit. Um, and I love how in the end, the little um, kind of like swag ends up showing on the front of the bag. So I decided I wanted to make a shaker card or like a shaker element to this bag. I was like, we can do this, you know. So I just took a frame, another wooden one that I got at Michael's. They have a ton of these for like 29 cents, I think, right now. Um, they're just very inexpensive. So I'm marking where I want to cut my hole. I made sure it was centered up and I'm going to cut that little piece out. And then I'm going to cover, I use two of these, um, I use two of these pieces of wood to make the shaker element. You'll see what I'm talking about in the end, but right now I'm just adding another piece of paper on top here. And I went with another piece from the Sweet Peppermint line and it's my favorite piece of paper out of the whole collection. I tend to gravitate towards neutrals and this black and white. It's just like the stamp I used. Um, the stamp comes right from this piece of paper. So I'm just placing it on there and making sure that I'm not wasting any of the paper because there's so many awesome elements on the back side of that that you can cut out. So again, I'm taking the toothbrush with the gesso that I watered down just a bit, and this works so much better. Now, you'll still get splatters all over your table, so make sure you don't have anything there that you um, don't want to get any white splatters on, but it's not going to go in your face. So I don't remember which video I saw this on, but it was the best tip. So I have some packaging there. That was from one of the new frames from Frank Garcia's Memory Hardware. So I just cut out a tiny piece of the acetate and I'm going to use my glue pen again because it is strong enough to hold up for the shaker element. And I cut it to size and I'm just pushing it on there. And the reason I use the towel is so that any excess um, glue that I had wouldn't, you know, be sticking out or, or be out of the way. And that way I could get a really nice, um, a really nice burnish on that acetate. So I'm doing the same thing to the back side. I cut the little hole out that you guys saw me drawing through on the frame. And I'm doing the same thing on the back side. And I use the top and the bottom of that little um, packaging piece where the memory hardware frames come in. So literally with Prima, like nothing goes to waste, not even the plastic pa packaging. You can make it for shaker elements. So the reason I used two frames really quickly while you're seeing me just dry brush some gesso on here um, was because like it was, it was too thin to fit the sequins in if I didn't use two frames. I tried it with one and it just kind of, they were getting stuck and they weren't shaking. So I ended up mounting two of the exact same frames on top of each other. And you won't see me do it, but you can kind of see how one just had the acetate and then the other one I covered with paper. So what I did is I just put the one with the paper on top of the other one and that gave me enough room to put these beautiful sweet peppermint um, greenish aqua-ish beautiful color um, sequins in there. So I'm putting the frame on now making sure to line it up and we have our shaker element now and it was great. So I used 3D matte gel to adhere that down. And again, I have a spray here. This is a really old button vine. Um, I can't remember what line exactly it's from, but I will have everything down below, like I said, and it will be linked on the Prima blog as well. And they're so beautiful. I really went all out with this one because it's going to a special art sister of mine, and I just had to kind of go all out on this one, but I really, I love, love, love these vines. I love all Prima vines, especially um, the button vines and the summer carnation ones, which are pretty much impossible to get, but they just make a project look 
so beautiful. They make everything look so beautiful. So that is a bloom stamp um, from Jamie Doherty, and it is so pretty. It's one of my favorite stamp sets of all times, and it has three different flowers in it, and it just needed something down there at the bottom, so I just put that there. Now the butterflies I'm adding are from the Zebra Teal collection, so they don't quite match up with the Sweet Peppermint, but they looked like they fit perfectly. So that is my little shaker one right there. So I did a lot of cutting out um, of the different collections when I had any scrap of paper. I cut doilies out. I used tons of Prima dies on these little bags and I'll have all of them down below because there are quite a few. I used the leaves. I used um, this doily here, which is my favorite one. I used um, some of these really intricate flowers, which you'll see me use in just a minute. But it was really fun to just kind of sit back with all of your little scraps. And that's all it was was scraps. I didn't take any fresh sheets of paper. I just used all scraps. And even if you're only going to have enough room to cut like that piece of a doily out, go ahead and do it because you know we usually end up only using about half of the doily anyway most times. So your scraps really should never go to waste. I feel like you can always find something to do with them. Okay, so once I have those adhered, again with the planner glue pen and that same sweet peppermint um, ribbon there, and it's so pretty, it's a very soft one. This, I use that star confetti die to die cut another scrap piece out, which I love the confetti dies. I think they are beautiful, and um, I typically don't use them just for the shaker elements like the stars. I use them just for that, for the background pieces that you can achieve when you push out all the stars out of it. I just love, love, love the look it gives. So I'm just adding that with some 3D matte gel. And now I'm just gonna add some flowers on there. Some of these I kept quite simple. Others got a little bit extra special treatment, but some of these I kept pretty simple. So I'm adding some flowers. All the flowers for the most part, I'm not gonna say all, but most of them are from the Sweet Peppermint collection. Um, they give you such versatility. There's um, blues, there's greens, there's reds, there's pinks, there's like a marriage of all of them and like the one I use right there. And then I showed the dye there. Sorry, I didn't mean to uh, skip over that. That was the dye that you get with that star piece that I used. So I have another twig here and I am just going to add some 3D matte gel. I'm going to tuck it down in between my flowers and then I'm going to use another... Um, butterfly that I stamped from the Don't Forget to Fly from Fenda Bear, um, that stamp set, which is like my favorite. And I love, love, love that. That was stamped on some, I want to say Rosie Bell paper, and I just added it there with some 3D matte gel. And I called it a day for that one. Now the Zila Teal paper is so beautiful that I had to use it. And like this to me just felt so snowy and so pretty. And I hated to cover up that flower up there. Oh my goodness, it's such beautiful paper that you don't even want to cover it up. It's just, it's wonderful. Um, but I did a lot of fussy cutting too, so I will add an extra piece there to make up for what I covered up. So I have these snowflakes that I've had in my stash for, oh my goodness, I don't know, maybe years. And I added those on there and I painted them just with two coats of white gesso. So there is another one of those intricate Prima die cuts, which I love so much. And you can kind of cut the leaves off. You'll see me do that on another one. You can really get these to fit how you want. It comes with three. One of them is just a simple singular flower. And then the other ones are just kind of like a, uh, a little spray. And they're beautiful. They're so fun to layer and they add so much dimension. And then again, I'm using more Prima dies. This is from, um, I think that was actually from the Epiphany collection. And they were just in my stash and I wanted to use them up. So I added those flowers there, and you'll see me use a paper towel sometimes, and I'm just dabbing up any excess 3D matte gel that might seep through. I choose to use the matte gel, though, for the reason that if it does dry and it does show, it's going to dry matte, and it's not going to show. So I have a piece there of the um, Fussy Cut Zila Teal, and I'm just adding it with my glue pen there, my planner glue pen. I just couldn't stand to cover up that beautiful flower piece, so I cut one out of another sheet and added it. Okay, so we have another doily here, and I am just adding it with some 3D matte gel, and I wanted to create a wreath. So I took some wire and just kind of wrapped it around some white wire that I got in the Christmas section at my craft store, and I am just adding it with some 3D matte gel. 
and I just added it in two places. Now this stamp here is actually from the Wild and Free collection, but to me it looked like a wreath. Um, I was going through my scraps and it just looked like it would be perfect to kind of go on the wreath there. So I'm just kind of cutting it to see how I want it to fit. Sometimes you have to kind of, you know, move things around and cut them to how they work for you. Um, takes a little bit of finagling and that's completely fine. So I'm using 3D matte gel on that one just because it is going on wire. It's going on metal so I wanted to make sure it would really adhere. So I'm going to use some of those butterflies that I stamped and fussy cut out on here as well. But there's another one of those beautiful fussy cut, or I mean die cut, flower pieces from Prima. And you can see there I'm cutting all the leaves off of it and I'm just using the three little flowers. And it's such an ornate, beautiful die. I love it. So I put it right there in the center. And I just wanted some extra dimension there going on with the... Um, wreath I was creating. So I'm going to add four different butterflies. That one is another Finnebear one right there. And I'm just adding some in like a little bit of a green tone. I wanted to kind of tie in some of those polka dots going on. And that's another Finnebear butterfly. She has so many in different sizes and it's perfect. And then I'm just going to add, I, I just did four. I could have done more, but I decided it was fine as it was right there at four. And I have my little wreath piece there. Okay, so we are now taking our little beautiful glittered piece here that is the deer, and I also went in with some of the artisan powder. Um, I'm not going to try to pronounce the name, but it was like the brown clay color, and I just kind of sprinkled some on there, and then some of Finnebear's mica powders as well, and then I just spritzed it with water, and it really kind of just gave it like a a darker look in some areas and lighter in some other areas. So I have another doily up there, just another die cut. Like I said, I did go a little die cut crazy on these, but they just look so well. Um, again, another little fussy cut piece here, um, which I was going to use on that one, and I decided I needed it on the bag with the wreath. So um, on the Sweet Peppermint paper collection, there is one side of a piece of paper that has about, I think it's three, six, nine, twelve little images that you can cut out and they're all the same size and that green piece I fussy cut out it was like around one of the little photographs so I just cut it out on all the way around so I have two extra um, I'm adding some more of those little pieces I find in my yard pieces to acorns um, pine cones I have I love using natural elements on my projects especially Christmas themed elements. Um, I mean, I feel like these just tie in perfectly well. This bag is definitely more traditional than any of the other ones. I felt like it was more the reds and the, um, the tones of Christmas more so than any of the other ones. I'm not a big green person. It has to be just right, but I definitely use some red on this one for people who do like traditional. So I grabbed some more of those flowers out and I love that flower right there. It's that same like stamp that I used on the shaker bag and that black and white print. And then I'm grabbing just a couple of other flowers and using 3D matte gel to adhere them. And it really, I needed something to secure those little pieces up there very well because it was not going to stay well or look right with just a big glob of 3D matte gel. So when you're creating, you know, we all know we have to like kind of strategically place things and cover things up. So I knew that going into it. Alright, so I have another Zila Teal bag here that I'm using the other half of that snowflake on. I'll push it right up into the camera's view in just a second. Give me just a minute there. I didn't realize I was quite out of frame, but I just used my finger to go into. You can see I'm running out of the 3D matte gel, so I was trying to use it as sparingly as possible. So I used that big piece of the snowflake, and that was pretty much my focal point for that one. I didn't feel like I needed to really do much else. Um, I had one more doily cut out from the Zila Till collection, so I'm adding that right there on the edge without covering up too much of it. And this ended up being one of my favorite bags, but that could be because the Zila Till is just so beautiful. If you do not have your hands on this collection yet, it is a must-have. So I fussy cut some more leaves out or die cut. I'm sorry, y'all. You're going to have to forgive me. I keep saying fussy cut, but die cut. I was like on a die cutting frenzy one night, just watching a movie, watching Netflix in bed, and I just die cut all of my scraps. So I'm just adding those leaves, 
And I'm not one for like green leaves, but I love these ones. So I'm using some more of those sweet peppermint flowers. And all I'm going to do for this last bag here, y'all, is add two of those beautiful sweet peppermint flowers. And that is it. So I hope you got a little bit of inspiration. You can see them all together in the photos and some of the more ornate ones up close. Um, like I said, you can make these bags really big. You can just add a piece of Prima paper to the front of one of your gift bags this season or just use some of the beautiful sweet peppermint flowers or the wood icons. But the sky is the limit and I hope you guys got some inspiration and have a beautiful day and happy upcoming holidays. Bye y'all.